Today is another Express LRS video, and we're going to take a look at another receiver. This one is from the company that I can never say the name of. So let's give it a try and see if we can get it this time. And it is the Flash 2.4 gigs receiver from Namimno. This is one of the Express LRS receivers that is available on the market if you're interested in getting into Express LRS as a whole system. I have been making a number of videos on Express LRS recently, and in this one, we're going to take a closer look at this receiver. We'll get it on the bench, then we'll get it under the microscope and have a closer look at what it's actually like. Now, at this point in time, I haven't tested it yet fully. So what we will do is also get it in the air, give it a few flights to make sure it's doing what I expect it to do as well. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. I have made a number of other videos. We've taken a look at other manufacturers, including Beta FPV, Happy Model, as well as Flywoo. And if you're interested in those, do check out the playlist with the info on for them too. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take a closer look at this one. Let's get it then under the microscope and actually have a closer look at what the build quality is actually like. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get it unwrapped and have a look at what we actually get in the pack. Now it comes in this like black bubble wrap packaging. When you open it up, inside you get an antenna which is nice, just making sure that's everything out of that. So we do. We get a 2.4 gigs antenna and we get the receiver with some stuff in a little bag as well. Now, this one is a standard 2.4 gig receiver. It doesn't have any additional extra functionality in the sense of it doesn't have a power amplifier for the telemetry side. So it has the standard RF output for the telemetry of around 17 milliwatts or 12 dBm. As you can see in the pack, we get a couple of nice silicon wires. We get, an, again, a piece of heat shrink tubing and we get the little receiver itself. It is like many of the other ones on the market. It features a UFL connection for the antenna. It does have a button, again, depending on what you're using Express LRS versions will depend on what the functionality is around that because there are some custom versions out there that do different things. We've got the main chipset, which we'll have a look at under the microscope in a second. And then flipping it over to the other side, we've got some additional chipset. We've got the other one and our Wi-Fi antenna for updating the firmware. And that is a ceramic one or PCB mount antenna rather than the little wavy track like we see on some of the other ones. Now its size is 18.35 by 11.5 by 3.5 mil high, um, but I don't have any weight specification for it. So I'm gonna have to try and find something on that one for you. They say it has a controller refresh rate of 25 to 250 hertz which i assume it means it may not work with the 500 megahertz mode but don't hold me to that that might not be 100% accurate. Now, I do want to say up front, I do like what they've done with the antenna, taking a bit of a closer look at that. The quality feels good. And it is nice to see a bit of a longer cable on this one compared to some of the others. Often we found some of them come with really short antenna connections, which does make installation a little bit more difficult at times. This one is a single receiver, so it's not diversity. So we've just got the one UFL on there as well. So. Let's get it under the microscope and let's have a closer look at the board itself. As you can see, we're under the scope. So taking a look at the main back side of the board, first of all, this is again an ESP8285 based module, which has the Wi-Fi updating functionality with the Wi-Fi ceramic antenna over here. We then have our clock and we have our little voltage regulator, which that most likely is up here. On this side of the board, everything is fairly straightforward and simple. So we've just got our components laid out. We've got some resistors and some capacitors, which all looks nice, all straight and no issues at all. If we then spin the PCB over to the other side, we can find our UFL connector down here. We've got that button up here. LED, as well as the other chipset, which again is an S, the SX1280, looking at that one under the light. And then we've got our real time clock again down here and the rest of our components laid out on the board, including our inductors on the RF stage over here as well. Now, as I mentioned, this one doesn't have the additional amplifier. So you can see on the RF stage, it comes out off the UFL through the components, we've got our capacitors, we've got, uh, that's most likely a link resistor, 
uh, we've got capacitor, maybe a cap actually, the colour looks a bit off. We've got an inductor, an inductor and straight down to the RF chipset. Taking a closer look, so if we jump in and have a look around the board just to see how the quality of everything looks, I have to say overall I am very happy, I see no issues whatsoever. Moving around, all of the components look soldered well, they look straight. I don't see anything untoward whatsoever. In fact, it's one of the better boards I've seen overall. There is a bit of gunk there from the manufacturing process, some flux left over, but that all looks fine. If we then just have a look around the QFN, looking at the solder, yeah, all looks fine. All of the pads look good. No signs of solder balls either, so everything looks as we would expect. Let's spin it over. This is most likely the pa the um, the power supply for the main chipset. I haven't checked it, but it's most likely the 3.3 volt voltage regulator. We've then got capacitors, so we can just look around, have a look at them. Again, the resistors all look soldered nicely, no issues at all. Again, looking up here, all looks fine. All of the components look very well soldered. Let's just come out a little bit so we can look at the balls around the QFN. I'm just going to tilt it up and adjust the microscope so you guys can see that a bit better. There. Okay, so we can see that all looks fine. Does seem to be a bit of flux residue left there. Nothing scary though. Looking up on those pads down there, looks fine, looks good, looks good. I have to say the overall build quality on this board does look very nice. I don't see anything here of any concern at all. About the only comment I will make is around the pads. If we look, the pads don't fully go to the edge of the PCB. And they almost look cut off slightly, actually. It's the same. This side is fine. Sort of, that looks better down that side. However, on this side of the PCB, they do look cut off. However, the vias do go all the way through. You can see them soldered all the way down okay as well. If we get in a bit closer and look down into the via. Yeah, all looks good. Nothing there to be concerned about. It does just look a little bit poor on those pads. They look trimmed where the edge of the PCB has been trimmed in manufacturing. But that's literally about the only thing that I have picked up on this module. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is flash it with firmware and we'll just test it's working. Now I'm going to do it via Wi-Fi because I find it's just simpler overall, to be perfectly honest. So what we're going to do first of all is go and get the target made. So I've gone on to the uh, configurator for Express LRS and we're going to select version 1.2. We're going to select device category, uh, Namimno flash 2.4 gigs. And we're going to say it is the Nanimo Flash 2.4 gigs ESP because this one does have the ESP chipset. So we'll say that. We're going to say we want it via Wi Fi. We've got my binding phrase. We want to enable telemetry as well. And then we'll say build. So what we'll do first of all is let it do the build process and then we'll get it plugged in and test it works and updates as we would expect. Okay, so the uh, firmware has built and you can see. It's all there. So what I'm going to do next is get onto me Wi-Fi and let's see if it's picked up the receiver. So what we're going to do is plug it in and then we'll wait for it to enter the Wi-Fi function, which usually takes about 20 seconds as normal. I'm just powering it off a power bank at the moment with the cables. I haven't got it hooked up to the flight controller yet. We can see we've got the normal flash in a second, which is telling us it's waiting for the connection from the RC. It won't connect to mine even if I turned it on because there's no binding phrase in there. But we will uh, just wait for it to enter that Wi-Fi and then we'll see if it gets picked up by my little dongle, which I've got down here. You can't quite see it on camera, um, but it is here. There we go. So we've ended Wi-Fi mode. Let's turn my Wi-Fi off and on and see if it picks it up. There we go. Express LRX receiver. Tell it to connect. 
So we're going to go to the correct web page, which is 10.0.0.1. We'll go to there. Brilliant. It's taken us straight to it. So we now know we've got the connection. And then we can do the really nice trick of rather than actually choose the file, we can simply grab it, pull it across, drop it in place, click update and wait for it to do it. The thing to always remember when you're doing this is do not rush. It says update success, rebooting, the light has gone on, but just leave it do its thing. Being no rush to reboot this, power it down, let it do what it needs to do before you do anything with it. Now I will know if this has worked properly because it will now actually connect to my radio because it didn't have the binding phrase before. So now you guys can see that it has actually gone onto that. So if we go then onto the full overhead, we can then see that it's gone into Wi-Fi mode. So what I'm going to do first of all is give it more seconds. It's definitely in the right mode now anyway. So we're going to power it down. I'm going to turn my radio on. Welcome to Mambo. Throttle warning. Switch warning. Let the radio do its thing. Right, there we go. So my Radio TX on. So we're going to power it up now. And all being well, it'll connect and we'll get the solid light. There we go. Instantly ready to go. All good. Flashed, updated, connected, ready to go in an aircraft. So I finished all of my tests on it and no issues at all. Range is good. Everything does exactly what you expect it to do. Now, the build quality on this receiver, the Namimno one, is good. No issues with it whatsoever. Everything is tidy. It does have that ceramic Wi-Fi antenna, which means the range is a little lower when doing testing on the bench and updating the firmware. However, overall, it's a very, very good option if you are looking for one of the longer range receivers for Express LRS. But yeah, overall, really good. Nothing to complain about. Definitely a very good option for 2.4 gigs Express LRS. Now, that's it from me on this one. If you found it interesting, again, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. I will put some links in the description to my Patreon account if you want to support us further, as well as my Discord server if you want to come over and say hello.